something I love about table tennis is that everybody does it, whether they are any good at it or not. It's fun, right? It's a great way to meet new people, and after playing it regularly, you actually become better. Hold on, Alan. What does this have to do with foreign languages, you're probably thinking? Well, I believe playing ping pong surprisingly has many similarities with speaking foreign languages with native speakers. Sadly, I think we all feel like we have to speak a new language perfectly before we start a conversation that can get our message across. That we have to master every piece of grammar and know all the words by heart in order to pass this real-life language exam. By seeing it this way, we create our own barriers. Recent BBC analysis showed foreign language learning is at its lowest point since the turn of the millennium in UK schools, as low as 50% in some areas. I want to show you how fast you can benefit from speaking foreign languages. It will take your fear away. A while ago, I lived in Shanghai, and moving from there to Bristol was quite a culture shock. <laughs> and I started to miss Chinese food. One night, I decided to check out my local Chinese takeaway and ordered my veggies with rice in English. However, I noticed that other customers were taking their meals away with plastic forks and knives. I wasn't used to this, having lived in China, and I doubted this culinary embassy for a moment. And so I asked the lady behind the counter what if she had any chopsticks in Chinese. And she laughed. <laughs> she told me she only had knives and showed me one. Not good, not good, I literally said in Chinese. She told me to wait a second, went to the kitchen and checked. But when she came back, she told me she couldn't find any. However, when she handed me over the food with a smile, she gave me the finest chopsticks imaginable. <laughs> and I had to laugh too. <laughs> I, said, I thanked her warmly and said goodbye in my broken Chinese. She was so happy just because I spoke a few words Chinese. The embarrassing moment, it turned out, was not my attempt to speak Chinese. It was a moment I realized, taking my first bite with my new chopsticks, that I had forgotten to pay. <laughs> and back I went, she apologized in English. <laughs> now, I'm not saying you should now start learning a new language to get free food, OK? That wouldn't even be the achievement. It's about so much more than that. It turned an ordinary transaction into a far more human connection. The biggest payoff comes in the first third stages of learning another language. The phrase, I don't want a knife, I want chopsticks, gave me so much more than just a pair of chopsticks. <coughs> I am now taking you to the very outskirts of Siberia. Precisely here. After living in a couple of different countries and being able to speak conversational Russian, I decided to make my long-awaited dream come true. I started to Trans-Siberian on my own in the very far east of Russia. Around six o'clock in the evening, I said goodbye to my couch-living host, Ilya, in a little Siberian town called Khabarovsk. I was about to board the next 12-hour train journey to a little town near the Chinese border called Blagovyshensk. I climbed through the stairs and boarded the long train that looked like it hadn't, it hadn't been touched since Soviet times and entered the third-class carriage. <coughs> I found my place and was about to prepare my bed for the night. The train guard came and checked my tickets and asked me a couple of questions I didn't understand. Luckily, three people on the other side of the aisle helped me because my Russian wasn't fluent back then. However, 
they weren't Russian. And I noticed something very unusual. They all had this red badge on their shirts. And so I was wondering, where are these people from? Nah. <laughs> they call me from North Korea. <laughs> I had never met North Koreans before and had assumed I probably never would without visiting the country. I'm generally a spontaneous person, and so I asked them, where are you from? From Pyongyang, they said in Russian. I couldn't believe it. Here in the outskirts of Siberia, I had just randomly met North Koreans. There was there were so many things I wanted to ask them, I didn't know where to start, and my Russian was limiting me in expressing myself. There was no internet connection and definitely no Google Translate to help me. And so I just asked, what are your names? In Russian, and they said, Han, Kim, and Kim. <laughs> We talked about basic families, uh, basic topics like our families, where we were going. We had been born in cities more than 5,000 miles apart in unimaginably different cultures, but it didn't feel so different. After all, everybody is looking for happiness and cares about spending time with loved ones, right? I was able to connect with Han, Kim, and Kim through Russian as a common language. Without this, they would have stayed a mystery forever. Do you want to see them? <laughs> Han, Kim, and Kim, and the woman from the Bristolian takeaway were only a few examples. My life wouldn't be the same without the dozens of international friends and experiences I've had thanks to speaking foreign languages. The most important thing is that I don't speak all of them fluently. Just like with table tennis, you don't have to be an Olympic champion. One of the biggest rewards comes at the start of the learning curve. A thing to take away are not veggies with rice or some posh chopsticks, but the table tennis mentality. Start enjoying things you may not be good at, may not be good at and give this mindset a try with languages. After all, your fear of speaking foreign languages is nothing compared to the benefit of new experiences waiting for you. Good luck. <laughs>